around 2000-2001, Web 2.0, which is N for N, everybody to everybody. This web, which you user-generated content, the user produces the content, and it becomes popular. This technology, this model becomes popular, this way of producing content on the Internet since 2001, and Wikipedia is a... Um, good example, it's very recent, only 13 years ago. So when we look at the advancement in these last 13 years, we see several platforms, and the greatest platforms on the Internet are 2.0, it's like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Wikipedia, and several others that we, these platforms are only infrastructures that are connecting people to people. We produce content, right? So this created a huge change to disseminate, produce, edit, remix content. And what we are living now, the beginning of a maturity of producing content in a, de in a democratic manner. This is the panel, New Journalism Strengthening Democracy. So I don't want to go on here, but I want to hear from these other people here that have great content and wonderful initiatives. I want to ask you, um, how internet, in this case, changed the work, uh, your work in the journalism. And I would like Amanda to talk. Perhaps she could start. She's very beautiful there. There you go. Good afternoon. Thank God it was 1995. I was very young at the time. So, you know, actually, internet changed everything in communications, in doing journalism, especially especially what the, the, the lady from the Philippines, what she puts, you know, when you call people for action. When I, I studied at UFSC, actually, when I studied journalism here at the Federal University, I entered in that, you know, I started college with the idea of changing the world. Andrea had that, oh, let's transform, let's change, let's, let's report, let, everything is going to change for everything that we, because of everything that we say. But when you actually go to the old journalism or new journalism, I'm talking about the pre-old journalism. Actually, we're we're rescuing journalists with the uh, internet. Of course, the public can talk better about this, but we work with um, the formation of young journalists. I re-found the will of changing the world, and I found a lot of people doing it. And how do we do it? How does that work? We have a school of journalism, and we have presential classes, and we produce content within people. In four years, we have 200 guys in Sao Paulo. I mean, I mean, they are very connected, you guys. You're saying, oh, yeah, the outskirts of the city are not. These people are doing a lot of things. We said journalism has six magic questions. What, where, why, and how you have an article. And that's what, what they do already. So it's to help them to tell the story. I'm, I just get lost. So in 40 years, we formed 200 young people. We launched two weeks ago our platform of uh, long distance teaching for um, high school students. We have 3,200 students learning journalism. And that's incredible because we lived a moment uh, uh, now. I'm uh, old already. I'm a young, old lady. I'm not that young. I'm not as young as my students, but the, 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 the democratization of the information, of the communication and the media was the big flag. And I think the big flag, as you said, Tomas, is the democratization of production. Everybody can do it. But this everybody is the ones that really want to do. They need repertoire. They need references. The knowledge, tools, Portuguese lessons. I mean, come on. You guys don't know how to write, not because they, of course, the media is everywhere, and he came, and he, he imitates, but we have to, 
improve the old media's quality because that's in ruins. So who are producing? Who is producing new content? Who are you going to trust? Man, if this friend of mine, I mean, if he does something really cool and stuff, I mean, if he does some genial, genius thing, great. I mean, he can have even more fans. Yes, what you said is great because this amateur journalism, which emerges because of the internet, and if you can, um, if you put technical knowledge, how to film, how to record an audio, then maybe you have somebody who lives that reality has that specific language to talk about, you know, from people to people, because everything that we said, the network era, that's peer to peer, P to P, peer to peer, um, between or among pairs or couples or whatever. So if it, a guy is 50 years old, the guy doesn't want to read the language that a 50-year-old man writes. He wants to read the young person's language. So internet uh, was uh, responsible for that. And so let's move to Andrea. Andrea, how did the internet transform your work? I understand that Agência Pública came because of the internet. Hi there, good afternoon. It was only possible actually because of the internet. The Publica is a journalism agency of investigative uh, journalism, independent, non-profit. All the content that we have can be shared and reposted, republished, free of charge. Anybody can access. So uh, sites, newspapers, magazines all over the world, they can publicize our content free of charge. And we managed to achieve several challenges that would not have been achieved on paper. So first of all, this, this democratization of information. Anybody can read and manipulate, and by that I mean to have access of the inform information we produce. And the other bold thing we did, well, we produce large you know, news stories. Uh, on the internet, we heard that we had to write short texts because people would not read much on the internet. And what we see that the opposite is true. We write uh, long uh, news stories. We, you know, it takes us one, two, three months in the investigation. People read, they share, they comment upon, and is uh, we have reached our goals there. And let me just share a personal experience here, which is the other side of uh, journalism on the internet. I have already worked on a portal before working at Publica, doing hard news, like very quick um, news. We have to write, you know, without even thinking. And I heard from uh, a director from this portal that I would not have to be concerned with the information I was writing, that I would not waste so much time. And by that, he meant like 15 minutes. Uh, I did not have to interview three sources of information. Then, you know, just titles that would be people would click. And by that, he would sell the uh, advertisement. And, and my news story would serve its purpose, sell the ad to support the portal. After this meeting, I left this company. Uh, you know, I left quickly, <laughs> and I went to public, pu Publica. And I proved to myself that it was indeed possible to do quality journalism. And again, this was only possible in an independent fashion without advertiser because of the internet, because we democrat the, the information is democratic and the production means we don't have uh, the thing about, uh, you know, uh, concentration in our hands of some companies. And more or less, that's the way. And just commenting on this, of independent journalism and the story that you just mentioned, and it's really, really impressive. The issue about autonomy 
uh, I became an entrepreneur six years ago, and becoming an entrepreneur is a constant learning aspect every day. It's like a dream to be autonomous, you know, to, be, uh, to do something that you believe in. And after this development, I realized that when you have autonomy, you can generate freedom. So independent journalism, that's what we're talking about here. Publica is independent journalism. And seeing that several issues on the internet have very low quality, many things in great means did not have autonomy and independence when great journalists would um, have their creativity stopped because their bosses had economic um, interests behind this on what kind of information could be passed on. This is poor autonomy, lack of quality. So how can we change this? And you think about that. And something that is really true, we're talking about social innovation, changing the world, but actually, to change the world, we need some money, right? Nobody changes the world uh, by breathing air and drinking water. They need money. And when you think about money, especially regarding journalism, the models that we have nowadays are based on advertisers. And advertisers, they get there with the owner of the newspaper, and they say, look, some things you cannot say, or you cannot investigate here and there. And this new journalist that brings democracy, more aware journalism, really interested in producing something true for the our audience. So we need to inform everything that we are talking to here is a more real policy to everybody. It's a more participatory democracy where people can really co-create, comment on it, post. And this uh, idea of having financial autonomy, uh, myself and some friends created O Sujeito, which is independent journalists. We help journalists to have access to funding, like collective funding. Uh, and then we create their agendas, and then we go through uh, communication means. So we're talking about business models here. Uh, what is your business model? This is the greatest challenge. Or whoever is a journalist and work in a great means has a good salary, they pay their bills, but they can't stand um, the work anymore or listening stories like you just, the one you just shared. So what am I going to do now? So what is your business model? Amanda, can you talk about your business model? Well, the platform that I mentioned, we did a crowdfunding because we have three areas at Enoise. Education, content production, and research. Education is the one that we need to work more on because without that, we don't exist. So we need to educate the guy in order for him to produce content and to make research. So because the posture of the researcher is similar to the reporter, I mean to the journalist. So and then budget comes from the sale of content from young to young and to selling strategies and research. And there's a story that I really like to, to tell because it's really when you do, when you negotiate of the brands, you don't have 30 seconds. I mean, but they have money. We have the young intelligence. So then what? How can we do that? Are we going to play a game? Is this a game or does, can it be a uh, Legit. We have a student uh, at Enoise, he does freelance, his name is Harrison. And first project we did was a magazine, a customized magazine for Ambev, which is called Jovem de Responsa, so the young responsibility. Nina is my partner. She just had a, a baby, I mean, a baby girl, and that's why she's not here. So Nina is my partner. And then we went to Ambev and said, listen, we have a group, a young group of people. They do this um, content of this level of quality. Should we open a channel with the other guys that you know participate on this network? And then guys accepted. And then we made a, so there were three reporters, young, one a a a photographer, and another designer, you know. So we had a picture and a director and a text director. So three. Then we we went to the meeting. Everybody was really, oh, this first project. Everybody will make money on this. And then the guys 
looked at us ugly. So what happened? And then Harrison said, well, Amanda, is this magazine for young people? Yes, Harry, yay, going to write to other 10,000 young people. And it's going to arrive to 40,000 young people. And they goes, but see, but we don't like the name of the magazine. So let's change and said, oh, you guys, so they're really boring, you know, because they don't agree with the name of the magazine. said, so, you know what? So the ones who call young, young are old people. It's true. You know what I mean? You have to really accept that truth. They said, yeah, it's true, you know, and then what's your suggestion? So, so we wanted that to be called na responsa, which is slang in Portuguese for you have to be responsible in charge of it. Na responsa is in charge of it. So, and then the guy went there. This It's been three years. Three years later, all the communications of the na responsa young guy it's called Na Responsa because of Harrison. So he opened up the mic. Us at Publica, we do that. Like, hey, man, let's look at the other. Look at us here at, in our office. Thinking, we're thinking that the people uh, are not linked. I mean, they're not connected. We did a project for Telefonica in 2012. They did a blog. So there was a soccer uh, in Capão Redondo, in São Paulo. There was a 15,000 inhabitants community. We had 14,000 access to the internet. And they don't have good internet, you know, great internet, you know, I mean. Uh, look. So the people were there voting, commenting the articles and everything, because they know the realities. And things that they report are very interesting for them. So let them speak, let them do. And then going back to the business model, there is a, uh, we are a um, journalism school, but I have so much more gray hair now to educate clients and companies than the guy, because the guy, once he's, um, he's learned, he's like doing things, doing articles and whatever, doing journalism. So when we can, when we do that with the client, that's great. Andrea, and you? Let me share, but I think there is somebody that who wants to share. I like elegant people, polite people, beautiful people. Let me share something with you. You are really popular on the net. You see, Vanessa would not come in, but people are screaming there. I need to call Vanessa here because they want to ask you questions. You are jamming on the net. Vanessa. Hey, here I am. I'm back. Faster than I had thought. But this topic is, I mean, the other topics are very controversial, but this one is very controversial, isn't it? Arroba Jardim Sonoro. How can we democratize the public consensions for public and TV? What, what a question. I am the interviewer. Thank God I don't need to answer that. Hold on. Let's talk a little bit about this, because people are saying radio and TV is a public consensus, but they serve service, uh, the interest of private companies. And this was very clear in the during election campaign. I'd like you to talk about this. Well, I'm not an expert on this, on public management, but I will talk about what I see on the O Sujeito and on the girls' work. Is participatory journalism. Internet brought us the capacity of making decisions together, co-create, and at the end, make a choice of the great group. This is democracy, right? So I think that the gov governments would learn to dialogue, talk more with this era of participation or collaboration more collaboration rather than competition. So perhaps an easy answer here, but could bring more deeper answers. Let's talk. 
First of all, transparency. Governments in all of them, I mean in Latin America, is transparency. So when we talk about put on the web how much money is which company invested that, how much they pay for each news story. So perhaps a lot of things would change. So as a shallow answer here, let's, um, let's give voice to our population, our people, and do this. It is easy to do this. It's easy to have digital platforms. That would be my answer. How about you, ladies? I agree with Tomas. I don't have much to add here. I would like to take the opportunity here and talk about something else we were talking before getting here on stage, which is there is something that very clear in the last manifestation, last, sorry, not, not the last ones, but the June last year, how the Stream, mainstream media had to take a step back facing the new journalism, and by new journalism I mean the people who went out in the streets with camera, with cell phones. We had people that were there in the manifestations. So what we saw was that in the beginning the tele great television and great newspapers um, started with that um, classic coverage, vandalism, talking about violence on the streets, and so on. When people started taking pictures of po the violence, the policy the police was actually bringing, then these televisions and newspapers had to take a step back in their news coverage. And this is very clear, and this is a clear example of the new journalism. These great vehicles of communication to just lie like that, because somebody will be there, you know, with a cell phone, filming, sh shooting, and they will say, no, it's not like that. I was there. And I think this is a very important change that comes with the internet and comes with all the gadgets, so to say so they cannot lie so much. Anyway. We've got three and a half minutes. We can talk a lot. Another question that needs to be asked here on stage is, who do we trust? We need to talk about bad things as well. All of this is beautiful. It's wonderful. But there are a lot of people that have um, dark interests, putting information on the web as a common citizen. And there is a question that came, saying, who are the new producers of content? Who can we trust? And this is from Luciana. Can you address this issue? It's very important. I think what I said right now and is the democratization of information, communication, but there is journalistic work behind this, which is which is talk to the people, investigate. And by talking to people, I don't mean only um, interviewing three source, like a gentleman did not even want me to do it, but interviewing several people, going uh, to the locality. And internet really enabled us to do that. The old-fashioned journalism would do like, uh, you know, putting your boots on and going to the field. And then we started doing journalism from the newsroom by phone or copying news agencies and doing independent journalism that don't have connections with anybody. We managed to go back to the field and listen to the people, those people who are there living that situation. And we were talking to the annoys people like that, you know, giving voice to these people like I'm Amanda mentioned. And this becomes quality journalism. You know, when you go there and verify things, you know, you cannot just share a picture or share a news that you don't have the source. So I think there are a lots of new content producers that are serious that uh, do this 
even though it's internet journalism, but are deep quality journalism that bring reflection. And I think it needs to bring reflection. And then I think it's up to the reader to actually re you know, research, go and find out about these organizations, how they make money, how they get funded. And, uh, and I think this is the issue. It's the issue about transparency. You know, like, you know, we know exactly where the money comes from, from the large companies. Okay, you can say Ambev, but can, can we say, can we talk about, can we name, can we name names here? So who is funding Enoise? And Luciana, who do you trust? Who are your friends? Last year I said that, you know, I don't have, you know, friends and I had fights over the election things, but, you know, you trust who you trust. I trust Andrea because I know her work. A friend of mine, you know, told me about, you know, the um, backstage of the entire news story. So this thing of going to the locality. So trust your friends and see what they are reading. And trust the journalism that dialogues, not that dialogues that delivers a ready thing, but a journalism that would listen to the readers, that will talk to the readers. I think this is a good sign of who you should trust. We are closing a panel here, and I'd like to ask a question to the audience. Please turn on the lights. Who has done at least one donation through crowdfunding? Look, 70-something percent of our audience. So I think this is very interesting to check and encourage people to do this, because these three projects that are here, they were based on crowdfunding to be able to happen. And to be independent, we need to have new ways of funding the kind of model, this kind of model. The idea of being able to believe in a noise or public magazine, uh, or another one that is in Pará, but I like the content that they do. You know, I could fund one project or a recurrent uh, financing, like 10, 15 re Brazilian reais per month. Um, this could be perhaps a way that we, it's not pay for the information, but it is to encourage the journalist to work and keep on working on that model. Any any last minute thing, Amanda? The new journalism, come and talk to us, but the new journalism is so nice to do, much better than the old journalism. It's an invitation, produce, put it on the web, post it, speak up.